Um, so thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Katie and I'm the Exhibitions and Programs Manager at Transformer. I'm thrilled to be joined by our two panelists this evening, Michelangelo Rodriguez and Jennifer Sakai as they have a conversation with each other about Ocho Tiempo, which is Rodriguez's first solo exhibition currently on view at Transformer, as well as about his artistic practice, inspirations, childhood, and travels. Michelangelo Rodriguez is a 2018 BFA Fine Art Photography graduate from the Corcoran School of Arts and Design at George Washington University. He received an AA degree from Tidewater Community College in Photography in 2016. His photography employs strategies of time and light to express, re to express retrospection and displacement prompted by the catalyst of familial geographic separation. In 2017, he was invited by Mel Chin to be a studio assistant intern during the preparation for his 2018 show, All Over the Place at the Queens Museum in Queens, New York. He has participated in regional group shows in venues such as Push Gallery in Asheville, North Carolina, and the George Washington University's Gallery 102. Formerly a resident of Norfolk, Virginia, he currently lives in Washington, DC. Jennifer Sakai is a fine art photographer, curator, and professor who resides in Washington, DC. She has served on committees for IMF World Bank Photographic Society, juried for Exposed DC, and VCU School of Art thesis program, received distinction from Photo Week DC in the fine art photography category, and has presented numerous curatorial and profession, uh, professional lectures. Jennifer is the curator of Border Wall and the Gifts of Tony Podesta, both at the Katzen Museum in Washington, DC. She has been recognized with a DC Commission for the Arts and Humanities grant for her artistic practice. She currently teaches in the MFA program at American University and is curating a photographic show for the Katzen Museum in 2022. Ocho Tiempo presents images from several series and reflects Michelangelo Rodriguez's ongoing interest to capture the essence of a moment. His quiet contemplative images document his lived experiences, heading home, commuting to work, or driving as a means of meditative escape. Regardless of the destination, Rodriguez embraces and relishes in the freedom. Ocho Tiempo reflects moments within these journeys that Rodriguez seeks to remember. In capturing the experience, he solidifies that memory and unique feeling. Michelangelo's exhibit is on view at Transformer until October 23rd. Um, our visiting hours are Thursday through Saturday from 1 to 6 p.m. And for those who may not be familiar, Transformer is an artist-centered nonprofit visual arts organization that connects and promotes emerging artists and emerging arts leaders within a local, national, and international context. We will have a brief Q&A session near the end of this panel for about 15 minutes. So um, if you have any questions for Michelangelo or Jennifer, um, please um, add them to the chat. It's the Q&A button down there. All right, well, I'm gonna just turn this over to you two. So thank you. Thank you, Katie. We're very excited to have this discussion with you tonight. Um, congratulations, uh, Michelangelo on Ocho Tiempio. It's a really, um, beautiful and, and personal uh, narrative show that you you brought to Transformer. I thought a good place to begin would be to discuss the title since it's sort of key to the meaning behind the work. Do you want to um, speak to us a little bit about the title of the show? Sure thing. First off, uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, thank you to Transformer. And I want to mention one thing is one special person on the audience, uh, my mother, who is her birthday, wh whose birthday is today. Uh, so happy birthday, mom, and thank you for being here too. Otro Tiempo, or Other Time, uh, reflects on memories of childhood, nostalgia, or like the feeling of being free or feeling freedom to be wherever you wanna be. Um, these photographs, I'm thinking about them as uh, places where I've been and along the journey, that is taking me to this point now. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, so a lot of the, for those of you who have not seen the show yet, and I encourage everyone to, to go and see the show uh, for yourselves, um, it's really taken, you, you have sort of the car is utilized in a lot of uh, the imagery, and you have a whole subset of work that we're really seeing, you know, the car window acts almost as a frame or as a compositional device. Do you want to talk a little bit about sort of using the car and shooting from that 
point of view because you're really inviting the viewer to have uh, sort of a first person experiential, uh, you know, introduction or segue into your work. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's something that we all um, experience when we're learning something new, um, especially if we practice it over time. And one of the things that stood out to me in my like beginning of um, practicing photography was like these, um, these, these list of rules um, that made a good photograph or a good photograph in, 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 in that idea. Um, you know, there's things like composition or like, um, you know, rule of thirds. Um, and one of these rules or teachings that I learned was um, how you can crop an image within an image. And in this, in these, in these photographs in the series, car window interiors, um, I'm using the window as another frame within this, the, the frame of this. Um, and it's trying to like present the environment in which I'm at, but also look outside um, and create a space where um, it's relatable to be riding in a car and seeing things that you see out the, outside the window. But also this series is um, kind of in a way um, like the lines to a poem or um, the, the words to a sentence um, where each piece, each, each individual image in the subject matter uh, or in the, su or at the, the subject um, has something to do with what I'm trying to say um, overall. Um, uh, for instance, there's three different vehicles in this series. Um, there's a Toyota, which is like a family vehicle. This image right here with my nephew um, sitting in the, in the back. Um, and there's a Silverado, which is like a family um, vehicle that I use often. Um, and then a CRV, uh, this is probably a little bit too much information, but um, some, some of the ideas are like this one, um, I played baseball growing up and um, baseball fields always bring the nostalgic feeling. So when I was in traffic and I saw this, I turned around, uh, got my camera and made the image um, as it was, as I was looking at it, because there's something about like this feeling that I get that it's just like um, intuitive in a way, but it, it really calls my attention uh, when I see things that align with like um, the aesthetics that you may see in my work. And um, that's, Mo primarily what I'm doing with this project is just capturing this like co this like collection of like same subject same subject and idea and trying to compile it to make one big body or series um, of work. Great. I mean, I thought it was a really um, clever and interesting use of of the car as a sort of compositional device. You know, predating Ocho Tempo, you had a body of work entitled uh, Fever Paradise which was also um, taken from a car, but really connected more to the painting of Turner um, or to Rothko. It was much more linked to a uh, color field and abstract expressionist uh, movement. This body of work, Otro Tempo, really brought to mind for me the, the John Devola series, uh, Dogs Chasing My Car, uh, and the way that that use of motion and um, vibrancy and kinetic energy is really present in a lot of your imagery in uh, Ocho Tempo. And I thought maybe you'd want to speak to, um, to that energy and, and sort of to the, the kinetic energy that's happening within these images. Yes. Um, so it goes back to like, if um, you recall, I was just speaking about like having this feeling that this intuitive like moment where it calls me to take a photograph, um, to like create a moment um, and remember it. So it's, it's related to that because um, a lot of the time, like I said, I played baseball growing up. I was always on the move growing up um, as in my childhood. And um, whether it's on my bike all day or like skateboarding or like running around playing um, basketball or anything like that. Although my mom would get so upset when I would get home so late, um, just like the, the the passion to be moving all the time um, and then being able, being able to be in a car and just sit and just like kind of like be forced to like relax and meditate and, and it's like a meditative process and then you look out the window and everything's moving and it's different. So it's like something related to like the feeling you get when you're actively moving or running or, or just 
in the in a mo in motion and then just kind of being in place sitting down and still being in motion and being able to look at things it's almost like when you're like if i was to be running to first base after hitting the ball uh, i would only see like past first base i wouldn't be looking in my peripherals or whatever but in the car you can look around and you can see what things look like when you're moving and you can focus and and, and contemplate on those things and and that's part of the fascination that I have with this like movement um, and being in a car and photographing, it just kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, I think that that, that comes through in the, the imagery. Um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, the subject of um, a family journey or family travel. And I know this series, you know, harkens back to childhood for you in, in some cases, but how is that experience um, you know, a launching point for um, this body of work? And how do you feel that you connected those dots in terms of family, family journal or family travel? Yeah, since, since I was very young, um, we'd, we'd, we'd spend our weekends five hours away, um, you, you know, and we would come back on Sunday or something um, because we went to go visit fam for the family for the weekend. Um, so traveling is just ingrained in me um, in that way. Um, and it doesn't mean like I have a superpower or anything like that. I just mean that I've had so much time on the road that there's almost like a language or a knowledge that comes from it. Um, and, and then in this in this show, Otro Tiempo, there's moments that stand out that 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 are like kind of repetitive in the, in the course of a journey or a trip, um, like a guardrail or like a truck that you may see that you may think you saw somewhere else or. Um, it's interesting that you see it again or things like that or just like things that are different or changing like things that are progressing in a way um and things like you know other other things in, in that way okay how does i mean when i walked into the gallery first of all it's it's laid out beautifully uh at transformer and really utilizes the space very well and the way um, the hierarchy of the work, I thought was really interesting in terms of the way it was laid out and sort of inviting uh, the viewer to sort of pass through. Um, and this was hung in salon style. Um, tell us a little bit about your decisions uh, for Otro Tempio in terms of size and scale and, you know, what you were looking for the, the viewer to, um, you know, take in when they entered the space. Yeah, well, I, I believe we're all familiar with the effect of having like a small image or um, something that's large or grand. Um, it's, it, it's a very, um, I mean, at the same time, it can be the same in terms of like somebody's reaction or, or the emotion that it evokes. Um, but generally, small, something small is like intimate or something big is like immersive and vast and it kind of opens your eyes and as you get closer and things like that. There isn't objects in this show that are very big um, because this, this, the space is actually um, relatively small. Um, but in the presentation salon style and then the various different scales of works, um, frames and also projections, um, I aim to use the space in an experimental way, um, not experimental like to the T, but just playing with being playful in a way uh, and trying to create an experience where somebody can walk into the gallery and recognize something and then start to feel like they're in the space being within another space, which is the car um, and being on the road um, traveling. And I think that's, I think that came across very well where it is you're inviting your viewer, you know, you walk in and you're viewing um, from afar, but then as you come into the work, you become a part of the work and then it's you that's in the vehicle, it's you that's looking out. Um, so we really uh, are, are having the experience um, through you. Um, uh, two pieces that, that come to mind and that sort of set up what you were just talking about in terms of detail and then like a micro macro thing. You have um, one image in the, in the series that's called Passenger and it's this beautiful detail um, that's uh, lit of a, just a headrest of a car and it's sort of when you come in um, just shows it as a nice sort of intimate um, detail and then you also um, have oh here we go yes there it is um, 
that so you have these sort of intimate little moments as well as the the framed pieces um, and then you have uh, a, a really wonderful video piece and installation that you made to accompany and to be part of Otro Tiempo, which is called The Sky Through the Trees, um, in which we are in the car, we are looking out and we see the skyline and we see the sky and the tops of the trees. There's nothing, it's sort of um, from midway up. So we have that, it, it, to me, almost created like a childlike experience where I remember being small and looking up and just seeing um, you know, the trees pass by and being in the back seat with your family, um, being on a family journey. You know, it seemed like you had a lot of um, intent with how you framed that and what you wanted your viewer to experience uh, in the sky through the trees. Um, do you wanna to speak to uh, you know, those, those two works, uh, Passenger and Sky Through the Trees for a moment? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll start off with Passenger since you mentioned that first. Passenger is kind of like, it's an asterisk in the show in a way that it presents to you the seat of like the, the protagonist, the protagonist in this narrative, which is me photographing my experience on the road. Um, and in this seat, the passenger seat of my, my, um, my like family, uh, Chevy Silverado, um, a lot of the times my mother would be driving me and I'd have my camera and you know that just that experience alone mother and son is very like you know intimate in the way of like family and um and it's very like uh fundamental in terms of how i understand things about myself and the world um and to me it's just it's just something about like how um, I'm able to capture capture something in not so impressionistic way, but in a formal way. It it speaks um, like a clear language about what I'm trying to say, and it's that this space here is is that there's something um, special about it, um, and it's probably because it's been there, um, you know, traveling for, with me so much and for so long. And, and um, uh, the sky through the trees. Yeah, Sky to the Trees, it's just, I I think it's it's almost like a fun little game. It's supposed to be like, if you try to focus on the sky and then you, the, the trees are passing by, um, it, it's, almost, it's almost like soothing to just see, I mean, the video here is lagging on my screen. Um, that's probably just because of Zoom. But uh, in real time, um, you know, we're moving about 55 miles an hour on, um, on an interstate. And... Uh, my mother's driving, of course, um, but there's there's something about um, like the, the the journeys of the trips going home, right? The, the trips going home are always like, you know, um, like those Norman Rockwell paintings in life. Like it's just like there's always like the happiness when you go, and then like the sadness when you come back. At least um, in, in 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 a normal or in, in a generic sense. Um, so it's like reflecting on uh, an experience I had when I was coming back home from, from college and um, just like feeling a way that was like very unhealthy and um, just trying to focus on the sky and um, feel better. Um, and it's, it's, it's just something in that it's, it's just, if you catch on to it, it may help you feel better or feel good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. maybe yeah. perhaps I think there's also that experience oh we're getting a nice sort of gallery view um it's a little bit like skewed or collapsed but just to give people an idea of, of what it's like when you walk into the gallery and the sort of different size decisions you made and scale uh, in relation to the work and I think what you're speaking to in terms of um that journey with um, family and travel is, is also that feeling of like safety and security and it's cocoon-like and it's insular and, and you know it's really you're it's about that space I think it's you know that's starting at that space and going forward is from um, when you know what the work in Ocho Tiempo is about one of the the things that and I'm glad you pointed out sorry I'm glad you pointed out this guy through the trees is this sort of beautiful constant even motion it's a little bit strange on our video tonight but uh, uh, I enjoyed as well with Ocho Tiempo is you didn't just 
sort of um, give these experiences in still images or in video. But when I walked into the gallery, you had a carefully curated playlist um, that is meant to be heard as one walks um, through Ocho Tiempo. And, and the music was very important to you in terms of what songs they were and the connection um, from childhood car journeys and what that meant to you. Do you want to speak a little bit uh, about the music? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So the playlist was created with me uh, with uh, when I sat down with my mother and tried to uh, um, re recall all of the songs that like she would have playing. Um, you know, these like you know I say I've been traveling to go see family on the weekends, but m primarily some of the traveling or majority of the traveling has been like because there's been deaths in the family and we've had to like go to out of the out of state to go to do like services and things like that. So like the music is not just like ha ha or like joy, although the music, you know, salsa in nature is very like joyous and um, upbeat and things like that, or about food. Most of the times like a gran combo only makes songs about food. Um, and I'll stand behind that. It's not really true, but um, yeah. So when I was in the car with my mother and we'd go to like these really, you know, heavy, events like a um, like a, a funeral or something like that or somebody's in the hospital she'd be crying in the car and we'd be listening to this music and I knew that like there was something else that she was crying about that I couldn't relate to or that I couldn't see but I knew that we were both listening to the music so it's like that music was like that that through line kind of like um, another project where um, you know there's a through line throughout that's kind of like um, invisible in a way. Mm -hmm. And the music was really a touchstone for you for this work. It felt like that was a very visceral component um, to, to, this, uh, to this series. You know, when we were looking at car series, I think we, you know, we think of Lee Freelander and his, you know, iconic car images or Stephen Shore, a, a road trip journal, um, sort of the, the, the beginnings of that sort of um, image making. How does, uh, you know, Otro Tempo to you um, add to that conversation? It brings it, it into present day and it includes your point of view. But um, in addition to those artists, who else are you looking at or are you inspired by, by this sort of travel-based or car-based uh, imagery? Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's things that I love about um, the work of Lee Freelander and Stephen Shaw, but I feel like we hear enough about them. Um, and that's great, you know. Um, but I recently came across Ricardo Jimenez, who created a photo book, um, Caracas de El Carro, or Caracas from My Car. And I relate to this body of work because for me, this body of work, Otro Tiempo, was created in an in-between space because I had very little time to just like go out and take pictures or like create projects. So it's like the car became somewhere I had my camera and I just would take pictures and try to work on different techniques, whether it's long exposure or um, experimenting with motion blur through long exposure or like flash or whatever, whatever I was doing. Um, and after hearing Ricardo um, talk about his book and how it came about, how it was a natural thing where he was just like doing this because it was his in-between space as well. And he happened to have these photographs that he, he was taking in between like work. Um, I, it really struck a, a point with me because that's exactly how I had felt about this because um, after graduating in 18, I've been trying to maintain a steady income through art handling um, and I've been working at multiple different museums in DC. Um, and it's just like kind of time consuming in terms of, and it's also like stressful and um, uh, mentally stressful because I'm no longer necessarily um, thinking like poetically um, with like, you know, whatever side of the brain is like that. I'm like more arithmetic or like um, analytical because I'm like doing math all day to like install something level on the wall. Um, so it's just like, it's like a it's like a reflection of like the person I'm becoming or the person that I am at the moment, and that speaks back to the title of like this is where I've been and this is how I've gotten there, um, and I'm hoping to do more. Wonderful, wonderful. 
Um, I know, I just want to wrap up. Um, I know you have a poetry reading on October 9th at Transformer Gallery. And I know that uh, really key to your artistic practice um, that you have always been someone who writes, whether it's um, notes about something that you're working on, whether it's poetry, that that's really key to your artistic practice. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how um, you fold that into the work that you do and how it's important to you. Yeah, um, so my, I, I, get a, I get a lot of things from my mother. I don't wanna keep mentioning my mother, um, although she's great and I, I should never stop. Um, but there's like things that uh, kind of like, like the things that you learn that just kind of stand out that I was talking to talking about like in the beginning of this conversation. Um, and one of those things is, is like taking notes. So um, like my mom has this story that my, my father had a, had a, had a, uh, he had a nephew who would always have a notebook and um, he'd be like, he, he was like kind of like a live wire. He'd always come around and he'd like tell stories and things like that. Um, and that always excited me. But one of the things that he would always do according to my mother is that he'd be in the middle of a conversation with you and then a thought would come to his head and he'd just write it down in the midst of a conversation. And I just always thought that that was like funny or like curious, but I was like, that makes so much sense. Like you can't let the thought just go away. And um, when that really hit me, which was around the time that I started this project, um, I was carrying a moleskin and um, you know, a pocket size moleskin. And I made it a thing that I was gonna like draw, write notes and write whatever reflections I had to come that came to mind, uh, which included poetry and um, also like whatever else, else think, maybe like notes from, from class or something. Um, and I kept that up and I have about like maybe two dozen of those books full of content. Um, so yeah, this poetry reading is gonna be selected poems that I've selected or that I've chosen from this collection of writing and drawings. Um, and it's, 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 it's important to my practice because of that, because it's like, I have like a, a, a family member who was like very adamant about doing this and I strive to be like, like them. Um, it's just like, it just, it just fall. I just fall in line with my family. Um, I look after, I look after, I look up to them a lot. Yes. And I, I know that sort of matriarchal connection runs through a lot of your work and has had a lot of influence on, on your life. And I love the way that in Ocho Tiempo, that's, there's a nod to that. And it's um, both universal, I think, for everyone, um, but it's there. It's there in subtle ways. It's the, the music playing in the background. It's putting the viewer um, in the place of the passenger. And I think we've all had uh, familial car trips, road trips. So I think that really comes through in, in the work. Um, so what is, you know, what's next for you? Um, you know, is this something that you are going to continue on with, uh, with this theme or, uh, you know, with this point of view or what, what, what would you like to explore next in your practice? Yeah, um, in terms of like the work that's in the show, I'd like to expand on the, on the car window interiors. Um, I was having some conversations with people that were coming to the gallery um, for the opening. And, you know, the people made a lot, a lot of great points um, that I took note of. And um, I'd like to have a little bit more control in, in, my, uh, in, my, in, my, in my artwork or in, my, in, the, in the work that I make. Um, uh, and so maybe just getting toward, going towards like having more control or finding out how I can maybe um, attain that. Um, but also uh, working on a, uh, a new body of work um, that is, uh, kind of like um, an extension of my work in the transformer flat file, shout out to the transformer flat file, um, <laughs> um, where I'm, um, like, I, like I was saying, uh, like I, I'm in like in a head space because of my work and it, that how it's arithmetic and um, analytical. Um, so I've been focusing on um, other aspects of work. So I've been looking at the street or construction and um, trying to figure out what it is that compels me to that. Cause that's usually what happens for me is that something I get fascinated with things like for Alto Tiempo, I'm like fascinated with movement. Um, I'm fascinated with like um, uh, 
how how sharp something might be, even though it might be a little bit blurry because it's moving. Um, so I'm trying to look at the conditions of the road and 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 try to figure out like is it is it is it this, is this way because the workers are you know the workers are doing something wrong or is it because like the continual use of like everybody that drives over them um, the roads um, or you know is it just like the sun or whatever so it's just that's very vague and I'm going on a tangent but um, I just looking forward to working on this new body of work that I'm in, um, having in the works. Sounds really interesting. I know you, you spoke to me about it a little bit uh, on another occasion in terms of uh, really sort of dialing in and myopically looking at, you know, signs and symbols that, that we might overlook and, and what do those really say and what does that mean? So um, I think, you know, I look forward to, to seeing what that work is. Um, I don't know if we would like to uh, take any questions from Michelangelo uh, about Ocho Tiempo or if uh, people would like to join in the conversation at all. Uh, is there anything, Michelangelo, is there is there anything in terms of Ocho Tiempo um, that we haven't discussed that you feel like, you know, you want your viewer to, to experience or to, to know? Um, yeah, so uh, at, when I was, when I was in college, uh, one of the things that I took away from it was uh, how art history and, uh, was began to inform my work once I started paying attention and reading the books. Um, and that's uh, more so about like, uh, like allegory and paintings and like symbolism in, um, in artworks. And, um, you know, I intended to like write a description for each image, um, at least um, have down like everything that I was thinking about in the image. Um, so I don't know if we can pull up images. Um, but one that, 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 that stood out was a uh, fleeting tree. Um, and um, it's just, it's just a, a shot where um, it's very like, uh, like, like, um, like milestone in terms of like, how the windows included um, in the in the in the foreground, um, which was not intentional at the time, um, but it's something that I would like to explore more. In this case, it was raining, and I was in the car with um, about four other people, and I didn't want to get the inside of the car wet or anybody in the in the car upset that I was photographing, although I had their permission. Um, and one of the things is is that I was trying to capture um, the form of this tree. Um, and like I said, I've, I've had like a fascination for motion and how things move, how things change forms or like kind of warp or distort um, when, when, when like kinetic energy is involved. Um, and uh, to me, it, it creates like this, this um, this thing that you probably wouldn't have seen before. Um, but in that way, um, you know, there's many things like that too. Um, okay, yeah, I think, I mean, definitely, I think that that kinetic energy and that movement, it's something that's um, been in your series and in your work. It's sort of a constant, it comes up um, in different forms, uh, in different series. Uh, so it was interesting to see that in Ocho Tiempo and how different, you know, it was a, sort of a play on what you did in Fever Paradise, but it was entirely its own conversation. Um, if we have any questions, I'm not sure if we do, but if not, maybe we'd like to um, invite uh, Katie to join us from Transformer. Hi, thank you so much again for such a great conversation. Um, it was really great to hear some more context um, behind the thinking. Um, we do have a quick question. Um, so um, someone asked, how did your time with Mel Chen, um, Chen influence your photography? Uh, yes, so I interned for Mel Chen while I was in college. Um, but my time with Mel Chen as an intern or studio assistant 
wasn't really geared towards photography. Um, it was more so like fabrication or like sculpture, things like that. Um, although I was working on my thesis at the time, um, the way the Melchin um, and his mentorship was formative was that he uh, introduced me to like various artists that I may have overlooked um, when considering um, concepts of my own or ideas or just um, like the visual aesthetics of the work that I was trying to make. Um, Melchin introduced me to, um, you know, romantic paintings of like um, James William Mallard Turner, I believe that's his first his full name, or like, uh, or um, James Whistler. Um, and of course, I knew Rothko and, and he had mentioned our opponent Newman and for, for their like their, their emotive or like their expressionistic um, concepts or ideas. Um, and and I also, think that's yeah. key, like the opening that door in terms of looking, you know, looking outside of photography, yes, yeah, in terms of that, that work in your series. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was just kind of like, um, like branching out into another, another um, way of seeing things, not so just like boxed in, but like, there's also like painting and there's also like sculpture and there's also like everything else that is out there, like poetry or like literature, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Anything, do we have any other questions or would Katie like to summarize? Yeah, any other questions? Um, sweetie. Um, well, yeah, thank you so much once again um, to both Jennifer and Michelangelo for um, this really interesting conversation tonight. And thank you to everyone who attended the panel. Um, you'll get um, an email if you want to ever revisit this conversation about uh, when the video is available. Um, like Jennifer mentioned, um, there's another program Michelangelo will be doing um, a poetry reading in two weeks. It will be on Saturday, October 9th at 3 p.m. Um, so please register for that program as well. Um, and for more information about Michelangelo's um, exhibition or about Transformer, um, Kara is going to add um, some links to our website, to Michelangelo and Jennifer's websites as well. Wonderful. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Michelangelo. Thank you, Transformer. It's a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a great evening. Good night. Good night.